Hello everybody, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Hearthstone Mercenaries, shall we? Well, first of all, just to give you some background information, I played Hearthstone a whole bunch when it first came out. Played through a couple of the expansions, uh, but haven't played for a few years. And uh, my brother is really into the Battlegrounds mode. I haven't played it myself. Um, I'm not really good at the auto chess format. Uh, but then, you know, he was telling me and I saw an advertisement for this kind of more roguelike RPG-ish take on the game called Mercenaries. And I decided to boot it up and give it a shot and see what it's all about. Now, I played a little bit on my phone through the initial tutorial and did a bounty. Uh, and so I am like, I would say on uh, day two of my progress in the game. So you're not seeing this from the very, very beginning. You're seeing this from like, I played through the tutorial and, and did a quest. So at that point. So um, let me just show you kind of around. I've, I really have no idea what I'm doing, but here's the hero tavern, which I built. It's free. You build it like right after the tutorial and it shows you who you have on your team. Right now, I have uh, four Protector class, which are the red cards. I have uh, four of the Fighter, which are the green cards. And I have three of the blue champions, or mercenaries, as they're called. Uh, and it looks like uh, Zarella, who's kind of like my healer, effectively has enough of these shards to level up an ability so uh the way that this game works is your champions or your mercenaries level up like morgul the oracle is level one but zarela is level eight millhouse manastorm is level eight indicated by this number in their gem and then their stats which is the number in the lower left corner is like how much damage they do and the number in the right corner is how much health they have level up um or increase as you level and then when you get enough of these uh, skill shards, you can click on them, and then you can raise the abilities that they have. And you can see, like, equipment that they can potentially get, or new abilities that they'll get when they'll level up. And then when you want to level something, you can click um, on this heal, for example, Flash Heal 1, and I could level it up to Flash Heal 2, and it would be more potent. Um... This ability, Blinding Luminance, is my favorite ability of hers. It's insane. It basically does a little bit of damage, and then it gives minus attack to an, an enemy. And it's a great way of locking them down. As far as I understand it so far, this has got a lot of gotcha mechanics in terms of like trying to level up your people and get the equipment that you would see in any kind of gotcha game, whether it's you know Genshin Impact or... Uh, you know, Raid Shadow Legends or Star Wars uh, Galaxy of Heroes, whatever it is, right? Uh, and that's fine. I haven't paid any money for this game. And I've been having some fun with it, although I still don't understand quite everything that's happening. So this is where you go to, like, make parties and, and check out your heroes and level them up. This is your little build table, which allows you to build or upgrade new stations within your mercenary hideout or base. Uh, this is the bounty board or the travel point where you can kind of go do bounties either on normal or heroic mode. And this is all PvE content. Everything I'm doing right now is PvE. I know there's PvP in this game, but I don't really have too much interest right now in playing that. I just like doing the PvE content and seeing how the mechanics work for the game. And then this is the campfire where you get these little quests that people give you. Like, uh, this guy's like, hey, deal combo damage 15 times. Or uh, Millhouse Manastorm's like, hey, deal 100 damage using Arcane Explosion. And if you do it, like I did for these, then you Looks get like coming up, some rewards. And so you can claim the rewards and... Uh, we got a mercenary pack, or you can claim her reward. 
Toki the Time Tinker, and we get some random mercenary coins. So uh, we got some for this druid dude, uh, and then we got some for this horde warrior man. I'm not even sure who those were, but <laughs> that's how little I know. And then what is this? Oh, this is the shop. And so, you know, you get packs or you can buy them for 100 coins or whatever it is, or you can buy them for money. And when you first log in and make an account and get into this, they give you some for free. Uh, I have three packs to open. This little table lets you open the packs. And let me show you what that is. So you slide a little pack over here. And you get this really satisfying animation, similar to opening up packs in Hearthstone, where, hey, we got a new mercenary, which is Antonidas, okay? And we got, and he's uh, epic. And then we got a rare Brucon, and then we get some coins. Ooh, we got some legendary coins for Garrosh. And when it says legendary, I think, I don't know yet if that means it's for a legendary character or it's it's the amount is a legendary amount. I'm not sure. Um, but either way, these are all the things that we got. We got some kind of achievement. I'm going to slide this over here. Open this up. And uh, we got another, oh boy, like Fairy Dragon, Brightwing. And we got uh, Rokara, which is a new portrait, because we already had this uh, mercenary. So now we can you can customize it, change the portraits, everything like that. Um, oh, Diablo is in the game, apparently. And King Crush, Alex Draza, those are awesome. I don't have those, but I would like them. And... Let's see, we got ourselves a, a rare Dawngrass Blood Elf, and then let's just open these. And Sylvanas, nice, uh, cool. So, you know, you get coins, and you're just trying to level up, and... A moment of your attention. Upgrading your campfire will allow even more mercenaries to visit your village, bringing new and exciting tasks with them. Right, so she's the, uh, that rogue lady is the kind of helper for you. Uh, what do I need to upgrade the campfire? Oh, 200 coins? Yeah, do that immediately. That's instead of getting two packs, but what that does for you is it makes it so you can get even more, um, you have more slots to fill up to get rewards each day. So this is all fantastic. I got some mail, apparently. Visit a campfire while in a bounty. During a bounty run, clicking on the bonfire at the beginning of the map will open your campfire as a quick way to check on the objectives or complete tasks. Okay. Um, they want me to buy that. Okay. And terror comes to the tavern. Collect the Lord of Terror and mercenaries so we can get Diablo somehow in the game, which is hysterical. Um, okay. And so let's go ahead and jump in then to a bounty so you guys can actually see what the game looks like. I was just taking care of some housekeeping, showing you around the base. And um, I'll show you. If I select normal, I've done these three bounties already. The level 4, level 6, and level 7. And this is the kind of roguelike portion of the game. At level 8, we're going to be fighting Apothecary Helbrum as the boss. And if we click on this and click choose... We go into this, and you can pick your party. And um, I'm just going to use this starting party that I've built uh, for now. But as I get more people, I might, you know, I'll obviously change my loadouts. Now, a crucial part you need to understand about the game is that uh, there is like a rock, paper, scissors formula where uh, I think red does double damage to green, blue does double damage to red, and green does double damage to blue, and then they take double damage um, from their opposite color, so it's kind of like you might want to load your party out differently depending on what the enemy has up their sleeve. Alright, so you choose, and I'm just going to lock it in, it says you can't change it once you start. And then you can see that they randomly generate like a little game board for you. So this is the roguelike element. And you get paths where you can choose which way you go. And then you start to get, as you clear, uh, upgrades that you can choose from that only last for the run. 
and if one of your mercenaries is knocked out in a round of the run, then you lose them for the entirety of this uh, game, basically, uh, until you start a new bounty or whatever it is. So you got to be careful with that. Now, in the protector battle, uh, you know, we have to fight some protector enemies, and we will get experience and treasure. The experience that you get in battle levels up your mercenaries. Everybody who you've selected in your party, even if you don't use them in the actual battle, get experience, and then the treasure is what helps power you up for the next round. All right, so... It's telling me here that you can beat normal or heroic bounties, and you get better rewards for heroic, but I've never actually tried that yet. I'm still too new, I think, to, to handle it. So, what happens when you start a battle is that you see the enemy team, and then you can choose your team. Now, unless there's specific, uh, you know, rules for the game... It's basically you have a team of six, and you can pick three, and then you will see three opponents that you're going to face. They have two gray creatures, so they don't have any weakness, really, and then um, a red creature. So we can think about their weaknesses, and we can think about what will take extra damage. So, for example, I love to play Tyrand, but she will take extra damage from this elemental protector and it's already um well let's see so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna play her and this guy just is already taunting like he's always taunting is his ability so we have to chew through him before we can get to these dps guys and you can inspect your enemies to see like what they have going on so for example this firefly is level eight it deals three damage when you attack it um, when you attack enemies in this game with your reg just regular base attack uh, skill you'll do your damage in the lower left and they will retaliate with their own damage now if you do a special like a magic ability a ranged ability they don't get to retaliate but a regular ability they will and then on Death Rattle, which means when this guy dies, it deals damage equal to its character's attack to a random enemy. So we just have to accept that it's going to hit us for three when it dies. And then this guy um, powers up. So he's a kindling elemental. So he starts out pretty weak, but every turn that we don't kill it, he's going to get plus one fire damage, um, which just adds to his attack. And then... We, have, we know we have to beat this guy before we can even target these because of the taunt. So we're going to want a lot of damage. Now we're going to take Tarandan um, because what she has is the ability to uh, randomly hit two enemies. And then I think I'll actually take maybe uh, Millhouse Mana Storm with me because he can AoE as well. And we just want to try to kill these DPS enemies as fast as possible. So here's when you get into the actual game and your choices that you make. So right now, um, Cariel Rome has two abilities. And she has four attack, 24 health. This ability, Crusader's Blow, you'll notice the number six with a wing by it. That means it's speed. Um, and what happens is everyone acts according to their speed. So this guy is going on speed six, and he's going to do three damage to somebody. This guy is going on speed six, and he's going to do three damage to somebody. And then this guy is going to attack someone at speed seven. So I think... Uh, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and have her taunt so that she will absorb the damage. We're going to do Arcane Salvo, and we're going to do Arcane Explosion. And now you can see, if I load this in, she'll taunt first because it goes at speed 1. It's very fast. Um, and then we'll attack with this at speed 5, and then 
will do this at speed four. So nothing will die this turn, but we will weaken these two significantly. Uh, then we're going to take some damage. Now, I cannot remember. I'm new to this game. So please apologize, or I apologize rather, as I learn things. I might say something that's wrong and correct myself once I figure it out. But it's going to do six damage with its attack. And I think that the taunt means they have to attack her. But if this is a magical ability, then maybe they can get around that. I can't remember how that exactly works. So let's see. All right, so we did our... You notice it did double damage to the red character. Yeah, see? Okay. They don't have to obey the taunt. So, it's a little bit different than how you would expect. But because, like, taunting usually means you can't target anyone else um, that is taunted. But in the case of their Firebolt, they either are doing it to a random target or they don't care about taunt when they're doing this ability and so uh i guess if it doesn't say specifically attack then taunt doesn't work so just kind of learning as you go now i'm going to taunt again but you can see we've really really weakened them and i'm going to taunt again and what the taunt does is actually heal her she's taken some damage uh and it will make this guy at least have to attack her. We're going to do this. We don't know where the damage is going to go with the Arcane Salvo, but it's going to do four to two. So it has a good chance of killing this. Um, and then I'm going to do this again. And what this will do is if the four hits this guy, it'll guarantee that it dies. And so we'll do this. Now, I'm just saying it's uh, as, as far as information goes and you're looking at the screen, you can go over here to the left, and you can go back over the sequence of events to kind of see what happened and exactly who took what damage and in what order. So this is really, really helpful. Like, for example, you can see right here that the blue character did double damage to the red character, did four, and then this is who we hit with this, and then they invariably um, hit Tarand with the... Firebolt, they decided she was the most dangerous, and that's what was happening. Now, on the right, you can see that this is my bench. I have two red characters and a blue character on my bench. If a character dies in the battle, then you get to replace it with your choice from your bench. Like Pokemon, I suppose. Um, and then, if you end the battle and you're not at full health, you are, unless there are special conditions, restored to full health at the end of the battle so you don't have to worry about like topping off your characters with heals at least as far as i've played all right so i'm going to click ready we're going to taunt arcane explosion and then arcane salvo all right so we just killed two of them now um we're at the point where uh we don't need taunt anymore and we just want to act before them. So this person acts on speed 6. And so I'm going to do Arcane Salvo. Even though there aren't two targets to hit. Just because it goes on speed 5. And then... Uh, there's no real reason to do this. But might as well. I have a quest to cast Arcane Spells. so Or to do damage with that. So I might as well chip away at that. Okay. And we win. They hit... The death rattle hit here. We didn't have to consider that. We got 46 experience. That's what these scrolls are. And then you can see, like, these two characters leveled up. And then the glowing green around the stat means that that increased. So we, we went up to 26 health, 27 health. And then these characters did not level up, but they're getting closer. Okay. And so we win, and now we're going to get a treasure item to choose from. And what it means is this treasure is going to be specific to Kariel, so you have to use her to get this benefit. And you get to choose between three of these. And so we can choose that she wears a radiant breastplate, and it gives her basically like thorns. So it's a passive that if they hit her, um, all enemies take one damage, which is pretty good. We can use this ability called um, Valonir, 
which is a four speed restore your characters to full health, which is actually pretty fantastic. But this two hourglass means that you have to wait two turns into the battle before you can use it. Um, and then it might have a cooldown of two again after that. And then, or we could take Circle of Healing 1, which says at the end of your turn, restore two health to all friendly characters. So, I like a lot of these. I'm going to try out this Thorns and see how much damage that actually is. Because, as you can see, um, I'm going to have to go through one, two, three, four more fights. So, dealing one to everyone over four fights might be good. Now, if I choose to go down this path, I will then get this spirit healer which means resurrects a random mercenary on our team and but i won't get to go this way which means fight or um take a caster boon i generally like to just choose fighting because it gives you a treasure and it gives you experience so i'm going to go over here and fight these this group of fighters it gives you an indication of what the predominant color type of the enemies you're going to fight are by the gem that's above the portrait so, if we were to select this, for example, we're going to be fighting Blademaster Samuro, and he's green. So, we know that red does extra damage to green. And that blue is weak. So, what we're going to want to do... I think I'm getting that right. By the way, please forgive me if I get this color triangle wrong. Um, is first take a look at them. So... As far as I understand it, and I don't know if this changes every time, but you don't get to see their abilities until they actually use them against you. So right now all I know is that he's a green 325 level 8 character, mercenary. Sylvanas is a 423 green undead, and Karen Bloodhoof is a 524 red. So I don't get to know their speed or their abilities at the beginning, and right now. But we know enough. And so what we're going to do is pick her because she got the treasure and she's just really nice with taunting. And I'm actually going to take... Um, I'm going to take Tarand as well, even though he will do double damage to her. But I think we can just taunt that out of there. And I'm going to take um, Gromash Hellscream as another red to do double damage to these... Uh, greens and then I think this is fine I'll click ready and see how it goes um, you can see that she now has a passive ability which is indicated by that like little lightning bolt down below her and the scroll or the banner that drapes down under her card reminds me of the equipment I have or you can look right here it's just sitting here um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, taunt and just protect. We'll do Arcane Salvo. And then Gromash can do a bunch of damage. And if he kills someone, he's going to get plus five. But that's not really going to help us right now. So let's just try to take down Sylvanas uh, and see what happens here. Oh, interesting. So the Radiant Breastplate... Wow, I didn't expect that. That was a very good choice. So let me show you guys. You can actually see the Radiant Breastplate over here in the sequence of events. When they attacked me, it does double damage to the green heroes. I didn't think that it would, but it is a red piece of equipment. So it does double damage to the green. So we just wrecked them. I mean, we're talking about, what, 5 damage, 10 damage. Um, it, it triggered... Twice, so we just did 10 passive damage by taunting right there. Very good. We're going to do that again because it absolutely annihilates them. We're going to do Arcane Salvo again, and we're going to try to get um, Gromash's ability to proc and give him plus 5 attack if we take down Sylvanas. So let's see how this goes. We're going to taunt and shoot, shoot, and bam, explosions. Yep, he got his plus 9 attack. Okay, now what happened was, um, now we can start to see their abilities. So Whirling Blades is coming soon. Two damage to all enemies and he gets immune, which means that we can't hurt him, so we don't want that. Attack an enemy, restore two health for each enemy that hasn't acted yet, if he does that first. Now, his 
attack has been increased. You can see below him, the banner says plus five attack. And when a number, a stat is green, that means it has been augmented or changed. We'll taunt again. And we'll do arcane salvo. And we'll just try to, let's see, what is your speed? It's six. And then yours is, unfortunately, it's eight. So he's going to heal up to ten. But we'll kill with the retaliation, I believe. All right. Oh, also, let me show you that... Actually, yeah, let's just, let's attack over here. You see it's glowing down here. It's glowing greenish. That's to remind you that you get double damage. Let's do that. Take advantage of the weakness. Oh, but he gets immune. I thought that the cooldown meant he would get that next turn. That is a shame. So we're wasting time. It didn't really matter the way that it shook out. Let's do all this. Ready, go. Got it. Okay, and so this time when we leveled up, for example, Zrella actually increased her attack, and so did Gromash. So both attack and health increased. Okay, very good news. And now we get to pick a treasure uh, for Tyrand here. Um, your alliance characters have plus two slash three so this is two attack and three defense or three health or whatever uh and in terms of alliance characters we are using our tank is alliance and if we use millhouse mana storm he's also alliance so and she's alliance so let's just take this and again i'm gonna take the battle because i like battles over um giving them a blessing as well and so we're going to fight blue Deathhead Cultist. So we want to take green if we can. Our red will be weak. But that's okay. Because we're going to take our tank, who should be able to absorb this. And I will actually take Tyrand um, like this. And I think Zrilla is good right here. For reducing their damage. Alright. So. Um, you can see everybody is just jacked up. Because of her passive alliance buff. So I am going to taunt. And then we're going to do this. I think. Actually no. Yeah this will do double damage. Uh, if it hits on the sides. So let's just do that. And then. What we can do with her is uh, just make it so this guy doesn't do any damage. And so if he dies, he gives Quillbar plus two, plus two, and so does he. So Razor Boar, Deathhead Cultist. Okay. So these are Quillbors, the guys on the outside. And Razor Boar is not that so actually you know what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna change this and i'm gonna attack with this over here and just try to take out the quill bores so that they don't get buffed up beyond my control all right so we'll bap right there and the nice thing oh we killed it right away amazing the nice thing about her ability is it makes it so they just don't even retaliate so we can just use that there. We can use this, and we can do this. And we shouldn't be in a really good spot to just win right here. Dead. Yeah, it's actually over. That was super easy. Annihilation. These are low-level objectives, right? Ooh, nice. Millhouse got a, his attack boosted. And... If you take advantage of the treasure you get and the enemy weaknesses, you do okay. So I'm really low, so it's going to be easy. Um, all right, so this is a boost for Gruul, I think, here. Um, 
This is ridiculous. Wind Fury is so good. It means you attack twice. Uh, okay. Now we're going to fight a green battle against Scavenging Hyena. So we're going to bring two red heroes, or I keep saying heroes, mercenaries, into this. And let's just take a look. So the Scavenging Hyena, just like in Hearthstone itself, gets bigger when other things die. So we want to take down the Scavenging Hyena as fast as possible. So we're going to use Kariel and um, Gruul we're going to bring in because he's all buffed up with uh, the Wind Fury. And then we'll just take Turan to uh, buff up our... Oh, the Alliance buff is gone. Did that only last for one round? I thought kind of it lasted... Must only last for one round. Interesting. Um, that's fine. Oh, no, there it goes. It just didn't... It didn't kick in at the beginning... Like, pre-fight. Like, his buff went um, from the Wind Fury 1 was indicated pre-fight. Or maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, um, let's do this. Okay, so we're going to taunt. Normally, you know, I don't always taunt at the beginning because I don't really need to restore health. But I want to be sure that the double damage doesn't come down here. This goes at 7 speed. All right, so we're going to do this. And we're going to hope that the salvo hits because then he'll get a plus two, which is ridiculous. Actually, to be honest, okay, we got it. That means that he's going to get plus two when he hits. <laughs> and he hits two things because of Wind Fury. So this, we just, I mean, that was a one turn kill. Ridiculous. Okay, so Gruul got an extra attack huge, and so did Kariel. Wow. Nice. So we're just leveling everybody up, getting some more toughness, health, defense, whatever you want to call that. And now Millhouse is going to get one. Mm -hmm. Um... I guess we'll take Improved Arcane Bolt. I'm not really planning on using... Millhouse Mana Storm in this fight because we're fighting a blue, so we want to use green. I guess blue is okay. Even though my tank is red and will take double damage from the blue, there's two reds. Oh, actually, well, then we we have incentive to use oh, blue. Crossroads is under attack. You got that right. All right, we're using her, definitely. And we're doing this, and then... You know what? Maybe I just will take Millhouse Mana Storm and spam his Arcane Bolt. If he dies, we've got Gruul just sitting on the bench, ready to rip people apart. As far as I understand it, you don't get less of a return in terms of your reward if somebody dies, and everybody gets experience even if they died. So... I'm not super stressed out about having somebody get knocked out. I'm going to go ahead and taunt. We'll do this. And then Arcane Bolt, we're going to just point it at somebody that we do double damage to, one of these guys on the side. And then let me just see if I can... They attack, force an enemy with the lowest attack to attack one of its neighbors. Oh, that's not good. Um, that's annoying. All right, so, but they're going to attack, which means the taunt is extra effective right here. I, picked your poison. I bet you did. All right. Okay. So, we taunt again. I'm going to go bit into, uh, let me just look at Millhouse's attack there. Oh, I can't scroll back to it, huh? There's no history on that? That's too bad. Um, alright. 
I might want to actually just arcane shot and do double damage here instead of attacking two targets and then do that. Yeah, it looks good. Let's just focus on killing this guy. Uh-oh. What a nuisance. Yeah. Uh-oh. All right. Well, then this is a... Actually, the one health means nothing because of our ability to just do damage to everyone. I'm just going to keep blasting. If they attack, they all die, so... You know. Pretty good. Almost dead. Alright. So, we'll taunt again. I'm just going to do Salvo and then do Arcane Explosion, and we should be good. Nice. Smoked him. No problem. 18 experience. Rolling. And we finished um, a quest, so we got two packs. And Millhouse leveled up. And looking good. Oh, and we finished story three. So we finished a uh, something from the board. And then we get your treasure chest when you clear it. This usually gives you like three boxes. Oh, we got four boxes this time. And there's uh, generally coins in these. All right. Nice. All right. So we finished this bounty. We got a bunch of coins. And now we unlocked the level 10 bounty. And we're going to go back and just check the mercenary board here. We did complete the crossroads, and so we get Blademaster Samuro as a new mercenary for us. And we'll take it. And we're making progress on this task, and then... <laughs> and then we have a story quest to do as well. Alright, so we'll go back. And we got ourselves a couple of packs to open. So we can open up a pack here. And just click on this and see. We got Tavish. Oh, boy. And nice. Malfurion. Gruul. Okay. So we got some coins for some people that we can actually level up their abilities for. Oh, nice. Ooh, we got King Crush. Cool. Been hoping to get that guy. Alright. And we go back. And then we can go into the tavern. And for example. Um, Cornelius Rome. We can actually level him up. And he's only level 1. But if we level up Martial Mastery. Gain plus 1 health. And attack an enemy. If it's a fighter. Gain plus 3 health instead. Uh, so this just helps him, I guess, get stronger as he attacks. All right, cool. We'll upgrade this. Nice. And then we'll go back and uh, see who else we have enough coins to level up. Uh, definitely <laughs> Rokara and Blademaster Samro. And, ooh, nice. Okay, so... Oh, this takes even more to upgrade. Um, and this is double the damage. It's pretty insane, so we should do that. Alright. So now her basic ability just does even more damage. And let's check out over here if we have enough to level anybody up. And we do. Now, we already got this to level 2, so we won't be able to do anything fancy there. But we can level this up to 9. And so it's almost double for the heal. And that might be helpful. Okay. Great. We'll say done. We'll say back. 
actually, let's look at King Crush while we're here. Um, so King Crush is a green epic that we got. And attack the enemy the lowest health enemy death blow repeat this so if it kills something then it gets a second attack on like whatever's the weakest so it, it really he really thrives on low health stuff that's fun so you can see that i have a bunch of like level one people right and so i can make a new party um that is you know um newbies and the newbies will just kind of throw in king crush and anybody else that we want to level up that's like level one right we don't want to bring our level 10 people okay uh yep malka uh-huh anybody over here oh yeah antonitis um let's take all my epics that are level one and then we might want one more red. Oh, but we, we actually u are using them all, so we're good. And then maybe... I have a bunch of coins for Rakara, so sure. Alright, so then that's like another party that we can use. And we can go back and do bounties. Now, I'll let you in on something. this I guy, Scabs Cutter Butter, audience. wants us to do combo damage 15 times but I don't know if I have anybody that does combo damage at, at the moment so I might have to wait on that um, but anyway do I have that guy? Scabs? let me look in here oh no I have him okay so let me edit my newbies party and take out Rakara um, and put in Scabs and then just save done because this way I can complete his uh objective and then that seems like we could it's better because we actually have a campfire task for this dude that we can accomplish and get rewards from so everyone this is a look at this game it's my, the first video i've made on it now again i didn't start at the, the absolute beginning but i'm still super super early as you can see still learning the game still trying to figure out you know what I should be doing but having a good time doing it I'm not interested necessarily in optimization because I'm just trying to have fun uh, and see if this game is compelling enough to warrant coming back and playing the content you know the the key for me is going to be to see if as I play it if there's enough of a puzzle challenge to the roguelike element of the quests that it's fun if there's enough like thinking and decision making that makes it an interesting game i'm in but if it's not that way if it's purely based on you know a function of how much money or time you spend and and isn't really about making decisions it might not end up being something i stick with uh but for now i like it I'm interested to see what you guys think about it. Um, I'm not over the moon. I'm kind of like, you know, cautiously optimistic. But I'd really like to hear your comments. Have you played further? Have you tried this? What are your thoughts and opinions about this type of game or this kind of take on Hearthstone itself? All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have an excellent evening or day. Take care.